what is up YouTube so um, after filming my little iguana video yesterday and then re-watching it I didn't really go into detail as to like what <laughs> I did for like the last month since he's hatched to kind of get to that point um, and that's a little bit important and unfortunately right now I do not have anybody to film for me so I'm gonna try and kind of explain it and then I'm gonna pull him out and kind of show you how I work with him once he's out um, so yeah when I go in and get him at first he would bolt run every which direction he'd bite me tail whip me fuck it was chaos food gets fucking thrown everywhere like I mean it was insane um but I did get this guy probably I think it was like a week after he hatched he was born right around my birthday so we're like birthday twins it's kind of awesome I love him so much but uh anyway so he was crazy um and obviously that took a lot of work to get to where I was yesterday with him um so what I did is constantly 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 in his fucking cage um i'm in there rearranging things uh fuck i must have redone his setup probably five times since i've had him i had a bioactive setup and then the substrate got soaked and so i had to switch that out and i do everything with him in his enclosure so it's kind of like exposure therapy <laughs> when you're anxious go face that shit <laughs> so that's kind of the approach I took with my iguana and it was he kind of really had at the end of the day no fucking choice but to get used to me and my big fucking paws that are so scary so I'm in there cleaning I clean once a week and what I do is um, when I clean I'll clean like half his setup so I'll take the back hammock down, wash all the glass, take his food, because I've got one of those food dishes that kind of sticks to the wall. I'll take that down, but I leave him with like a branch and another hammock on the other side so that he has somewhere where he can sit and kind of watch me. Um, so yeah, I do one side of the cage. I'll wash all the glass, take all the stuff out, soak it all in the tub with some vinegar, get everything all cleaned up and scrubbed up. And then I put that stuff back into that side of the cage and then I start kind of tearing down the other side. And while I'm tearing down the other side, obviously he'd be like, fuck this and go back to his other side. And then I do what I had to do on that side. So that was a really great way of just kind of getting him used to my hands and being around and he's set up right in my bedroom. Um, I don't ever leave my room for anybody that knows me and follows me anywhere else. I am like a bedroom dweller. I love it in here. I have one, two, three, four, five reptiles in my bedroom with me. Um, and I just, it's my cozy place. I watch all my informational YouTube videos. Um, actually all the techniques I used to help tame down Gizmo, I learned from Kevin at New England Reptiles. He raises up water monitors and pythons and does all sorts of breeding and selling and uh taming and all sorts of insane videos and i bet you i've watched like every single fucking video that they have <laughs> um but it's really honestly done me some good because i learned so much from that man he is amazing at what he does and taming down his monitors and so on um and there's nothing out there <laughs> that really makes okay so every time i've watched a fucking video on taming down iguanas it's people going in there grabbing these fucking things and then holding them as tight as they can in their hands until they stop moving well they're not stopping moving because they're comfortable in your hands all of a sudden they're stopping moving because they're frightened they're paralyzed with fear and that is not the kind of relationship that you want to build with this animal that is going to be six feet long, full of fucking weapons. <laughs> um, so therefore, I decided I was going to try and 
document this and kind of maybe try and help somebody else out there with a little baby iguana that's fucking crazy that they would love to keep their entire life because most people get these pets and they reach puberty and then they get mean and crazy and people just don't know how to deal with them and now I know why because there is not much information out there. So what I've done is taken Kevin's techniques and kind of transferred it into, it's basically the same thing for any lizard. What you're doing here is trying to earn their trust, trying to get them used to you um, and not in a fearful way. And it's really hard with a fucking hatchling because they're just scared of you. So you don't want to have to grab this thing and hold it and do this and do that. Um, and I was doing that at first. I am not even going to lie. I was pulling him out of his cage because everything that I fucking saw on YouTube told me that you got to handle this thing every day, blah, 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 right? So, and I just didn't want this thing to be afraid of me forever. So I was like, okay, I'm going to handle him every day. And I was doing it all wrong. He would flip the fuck out every time I went into his enclosure. Um, until I watched Kevin's videos and I started doing the, you know, we put our hand in in a fist that way there it's not biteable well it is biteable but it's less biteable than this <laughs> which I was doing I was like come here and then he'd fucking chop my fingers so yeah ever since I started well okay so this is how I started now I go in like this and I'll have my other hand so I kind of like coax him and guide his movements to get him into my hand. Then he's sitting on my hand. He doesn't even realize it. I pull him out of his enclosure and I'm like, hey, dude. <laughs> and he's like, how the fuck did I get here? Ah! <laughs> but no, he's like, well, that's how he was at first. But now he's pretty chill. Once he's out, he's like, oh, okay. I get to go play on the bed and look in my window and hang out with mom. So it's not quite as bad. Um, another thing I've seen a lot of people doing with iguanas is just trying to hand feed them out of their enclosures which really does look like it works. Um, for my situation, unfortunately, all animals are different. Um, he just doesn't want to eat from my hands, man. <laughs> like I have fucking tried. He'll sit like in the mornings, I'll pull some fruit out or whatever. And when I take him out for the first time, he'll, he'll lick a banana a little bit. Cause I post on Facebook all the time that I'm sharing bananas or whatever the fuck with him in the morning. And I do, but it's very little on his part. I'll eat most of the banana and he'll take like two little licks, <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's a really, really good eater. Um, but he eats from his dishes in his enclosure and that's just what he likes to do so I'm sure maybe once he gets bigger and his appetite grows a little bit more like you gotta think this guy I got him a week after he hatched or what uh, not too far after September 1st I think so I've had him a month and two weeks probably so yeah he's he's well, he was like the size of my finger and now he's getting chubby he's shed a couple times so he's growing pretty quickly uh, but still not a huge appetite on the, like, he eats, but periodically through the day, he'll just kind of pick up the salads that I leave in there and whatever. So as long as he's eating, I'm happy. He doesn't need to eat from my hand. I figured out other ways of taming him. So yeah. So like I said, I would just both my hands in the enclosure. That's why when I try and film getting him out of his enclosure by myself, it's so much harder because I use two hands and I follow him around his enclosure which I don't really even have to do anymore I just kind of put my hand and I'll coax his little bum and he's in my hand and I pull him out it's super easy I have a video on that that I posted yesterday so you guys can check that out if you haven't seen it yet um but yeah so but before it was you know you kind of got to follow him around and coax him and no grabbing no touch well okay I touch but just kind of like guide him into your hand without scaring him or grabbing him and then pulling him out gently. Um, but yeah, and any chance you get to be in that enclosure with that animal, whether it's when you're feeding him, talk to him. When you're giving him his showers, talk to him. When you're cleaning, talk to him. This guy probably doesn't even think his name is Gizmo because I call him baby all the fucking time. You're such a good little baby. Oh, you're so brave and all this fuckery. But 
to be honest with you, he's like my kid now because my kids are like 22 and 17 and don't need my ass anymore. Um, so yeah, I got an iguana <laughs> and a few other reptiles, but they're not babies. Well, my, my husband has a couple baby snakes, but I don't play with those. I play with the lizards. So anyways, um, so yeah, I'm going to pull him out of his enclosure and kind of show you guys what he does. I got to tie my hair up too. So I'm going to just pause this and I will be back with Gizmo. Okay, so after watching all my rambling, I decided I'm going to add in the video of me getting Gizmo out of his enclosure with one hand in the camera. And then following that video, I will put in the clips of me getting him out with two hands and my husband recording. So you guys can kind of take a look at how that works. And then following that, I'll have him out on the bed and hanging out and then going back home. All right, thanks for watching guys. Here's some clips. All right, so we are gonna do how I get Gizmo out of his enclosure. With one hand, this might be a little bit hard. But we shall try. Come, baby. Hey, buddy. You want to See, this is where the one hand becomes a bit of an issue. Get up here. Hey, baby. Dragon's like, I don't like this camera. She like I'm gonna come out. Ugh, see, this is so hard to do and hold the phone at the same time. Oh, that wasn't me, that was your fogger that dripped on you, baby, not me. Awesome, awesome experience. Just having these yeah. animals. They're, if you have the abilities and the dedication to these, a little bit. You know, it's, they're, they're amazing species. Absolutely, water monitors are, are everything that uh, you, could, you can ask for. And uh, a little miniature dinosaur. And cats that bred and born are the way to go. So and I always try and kind of slide my hand yes. under him. What do you think? And then get him you. to, there we go. Come on, baby. And, oh, you All right, I'm going to do a quick video how okay. to set up one of Nerd's baby socialized water okay, monitors. And I'm going to basically corner. keep it really simple and just going to touch on some of the basic points. So, what can you keep it in? Well, a good thing to start out with with your socialized baby and water monitor. Something we simple like a 20 long fish tank or a okay. vision cage, something like that. There you go, buddy. Uh, we don't want to make it too big. So I practice so that with him like 30 inches, 101 times a day. Roughly 16. It is getting so better, it be but secure, he still doesn't thing. like it. So freaking hilarious. So I just watched myself getting that fucking, uh, getting the iguana with one hand and all you can hear in the background is Kevin from Nerd talking about socializing his monitors. I live on that channel. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get Gizmo out of his cage with somebody else filming today so that it's a little bit easier. So we're gonna show you how I try and kind of scoop him out without grabbing him. So I'm gonna go come over here. <laughs> Stop staring at me. So get him back in the corner. So I'm trying to do this with two of us in the cage. Here you go, baby. Come on. Come on. You want to come out? Come on, baby. You're okay. See, no dewlap. And I'm under him. Woo! And he's out. Big improvement since the last video. Hey, my sweetie. And that's how we've been taming him down. Just kind of getting him in a position where we can lift him out comfortably. And we got a happy little Anna. Wanna go home? There you go, baby. He's not running away from me. He just goes in nice and calm, and that's what we want. 
And we practice that like 150 times a day. And he's such a good little baby now. That's all. Alright, so it took me all of like two seconds. Poor little guy's face is shedding though. <laughs> so he's got this shed all around his eye. But yeah, so he's out. He's like trying to, he loves, he wants to get on that dresser so bad. But this is how I hold him. I just kind of let him go all over me. Wherever he wants to go. And then he's got the bed and he's got pillows in front of the window over there. Which I will take off and show you guys in a minute. But see, he's still... But I just guide his movements. See, so I'll get him onto my other hand. There you go. But I never grab him. Just constantly. He's like, I don't want to go on your hand, mommy. He's going to jump. He wants to jump. <laughs> but, yeah, I just... And then I work with him petting him. And no boundaries. Like, I touch him everywhere so that he's used to it but never restricting his movements. I really wish, maybe what I'll do is I will add that video of me getting him out of his enclosure into this one. You need a nose. Oh, easy, you're okay. See, he's still a little bit skittish, obviously, because we just started having all these really awesome improvements um, within the last week, I'd say, because now it'll take me less than 60 seconds to get him out of his enclosure whereas before it was like 10 minutes 5 minutes this and that so it's been a lot of work with this guy but thank god I work from home so I got all the fucking time in the world for this little guy and his shenanigans so hey buddy you wanna go run around on the bed okay I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'll show you guys what he does on the bed alright so he's climbing up my arm instead of jumping on the bed there you go. You're free. And he always, pretty much usually goes up to that window. I got pillows set up up there for him so he can just chill. Hey, dude. Where are you going? Where are you going? There he goes up to his window. Hello, Viva. Yeah. And yeah, this iguana is legit one month old. And he's amazing. Easy. Easy. You're okay. You're okay. No, you're not going that way. And we just work with him like this, see? And his tongue flicks. So that means he's curious. And he's thinking. Which are great behaviors. Yes, they are. You my dude? Yeah, but like I said, he's still jumpy and we're still working. And this camera is not focusing. Sorry, guys kind of horrible maybe it's the light because he's in the window but anyways <clears throat> oh another thing I forgot to mention about when I get him out of his enclosure when I'm doing it I kind of like walk his body up gently with my fingers so that he doesn't realize I'm kind of grabbing him but I'm not hey baby see like this and then I just kind of walk him up, and to do, I got him. And that's basically, oh, see you later. That's basically exactly what I do with him in his enclosure. Is easy, baby, you're okay. When he's out, he's a little bit more sketchy. You're okay, buddy. You're okay. See, so this is all the same. Boom techniques and I'll do this with him in his enclosure over and over and over again just to get him used to it you see he's not freaking out he's like what the fuck but see how my fingers are kind of like walking him into my hand and then if I don't want him to jump I put him up so high he's uncomfortable <laughs> hey buddy and then we're gonna put him back home as long as you don't jump off my hand. Where are you going? Well, now you've ruined it. Now I need two hands, see? And this <laughs> is why I need two hands. You make filming videos very hard, my sweetness. Look at all that little shed stuck on his poor little face. Oh, and his camera is not focusing. 
All right, I'm going to have to put you guys down so I can get him back in his enclosure. He did well for his episodes this morning, so we're going to call it a day. No, don't jump back down there. Ma! Okay, I will be back. Oh, he's going back the other way. Maybe. Okay, sorry this sucks, but I'm going to see if I can just... There you go, baby. No, you're not going on top of your home. You can go, oh, there we go, and he jumped in. Woohoo! So see that? Not once did I grab him. Look at his poor little eye. Oh, boy. That just started this morning. He did have a shower and a bath this morning. It's just not coming off. So don't worry. He is not dehydrated. His levels are good. His humidity is always over 70%. And he's got clean water down there. Lots of food. Lots of hangout space. And a cute little face. I love him so much. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps somebody with a baby green iguana because I know sh I sure as fuck could not find anything. So I went to monitor videos with Kevin for training techniques. But you know what? In all honesty, his techniques are amazing and they work extremely well because this guy was savage. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, New England Reptiles, for all your awesome fucking videos. And Gizmo thanks you too. His life is a lot less stressful because of you guys. So much appreciated. And uh, yeah, hopefully this can help somebody else with a baby iguana. Just get things going a little bit easier for you.